All right then, gang, so this app is looking okay so far, but the layout is pretty basic. Now, I know for a to-do app, you don't really need a complex layout, but you might make apps in the future which do need more complex layouts. For example, a row of content in the top, like icons, or a grid of pictures, or something like that. Now, the techniques we've used so far don't really enable us to do that. They just enable us to stack things one on top of the other. Also, we have another problem in this app that we've seen in the past. When we add too many to-dos, they go off the screen, and that's because this flat list down here, this is being pushed off the screen by this content at the top. Now, in order for us to fix this and also to create some better layouts, more flexible layouts, we're going to look at Flexbox in React Native. Now, if you're from a web background and you understand CSS, then you might already know a lot about Flexbox and that's going to serve you very well in React Native because it's very similar. If you don't know about it already, then don't worry, I'm going to teach you all the basics now. Now, the best way to do this, I think, is to create a sandbox component, which I've already done inside components, just so we can mess around with it. And all we've done here is import a few things at the top. Then we've created a functional component with a text widget right here and an empty style sheet at the bottom. Now we need to embed this sandbox inside app.js instead of all of this content over here. So what I'm going to do is comment out all of this stuff by pressing control and forward slash. And you can see I've already created this sandbox component right here and I've imported that at the top. So that's importing the component from sandbox over here. Okay. All right then, so over in Sandbox now, we can start to play around with Flexbox. I tell you what, let me first just save app.js so we can actually see this component over here. And we should see this Sandbox text at the top somewhere. There it is, hidden underneath this little bar. Okay, so to demo this, let me first of all get rid of this text widget. And instead, we'll replace that with a view widget instead, or component if you like. I've been spending too much time using Flutter, and Flutter calls them widgets. Uh, React Native calls them components, so I sometimes mix those two up. But anyway, this view will give a style equal to styles.container. And down here, we'll need to create this container style as well. So all we're going to do is give this a padding top, first of all, of 40 pixels, and then also a background color of some kind of gray color, we'll say DDD, which is a light gray. Now, when I hit save, you're gonna see this over here appear as a strip at the top, which is gonna be 40 pixels in height, and that's because of the padding right here. Now, if I change this to something like 100, it's gonna get taller because the space that's being taken up here is just the padding. There's nothing inside the view yet, okay? So let's change that back to 40. Now. Views, remember, they're a bit like wrapper components, right? They wrap other components, a bit like a div tag in HTML. Now, out of the box, automatically, they use Flexbox under the hood. Now, what does that mean? Well, it means two things. First of all, it means I can add a flex property to this. And if I set this to one, watch what happens over here. I'm going to save it and watch what happens to the gray bar it should take up the whole height of the page, and it does. And if you can't really tell that because it is a light gray, let me change this to a dark one, 333, and then save. And now we can see we get a dark background all the way down. So just adding that one property, flex, and set that equal to one, what that does is say, okay, I want you to become a flexible component and flex all the way down to the bottom. OK, so take up all the available room available to you on this screen. And that's what it does. OK, then. So what I'm going to do now is nest a few different things inside this view over here. So these are just going to be text widgets. Now, instead of me writing out these from scratch, boring you, let me just paste those in. So we can see we have uh, four text widgets. I can't count for one, two, three, four. And each of those has a style prop. Now we have styles.box1, .box2, .box3, and box4. So we'll create those in a minute. Also, we have one, two, three, and four as the text. Now, if I save this at the minute, all you're going to see is one, two, three, four on top of each other, right? That's normal. Now, what I'm going to do is come down here, 
and give these some different styles, some simple styles to begin with. So first of all, I'm gonna do box one. And all we'll say is this is gonna have a background color and that background color is gonna be violet. And I'm also gonna give this some padding. So padding is gonna be 10 pixels. Now I'm gonna do the same thing for each box. So let me just copy this because I'm pretty lazy and change this to two. And the background color of this one is not gonna be violet. We'll give this a background color of gold. And then the next one down here, we'll paste this in again. This time box three. And we'll give this a background color of coral. And then finally, we'll do box four, like so. And can I spell that? Nope. And this will have a background color of sky blue. Okay. So we have these four boxes. If I press save, we should see the background colors of those now. And they should just stack on top of each other. No, they don't because I've made an error somewhere. And that's because there's no such color as color. Don't know what I was doing there. Coral. Okay, so save that. And hopefully now we should see these four boxes all with a different background color, okay? Now, by default, they're all taking up the full width. That's the default normal behavior of these things. And they stack one on top of the other, right? And they have 10 pixels of padding, top and bottom and left and right, but you just can't see the right padding. Okay, so that's the default behavior right here. Now, I said that two things happen when we have flex enabled in views, which they are automatically. So the first thing is that we can add a flex property right here to make it stretch all the way down. The second thing is that everything inside that flex container now becomes a flex item, okay, automatically. And what we can do now is change the display of these inside this flex container. Now, the first way we can do that is by adding a flex direction to the container. Now, by default, this value is column. And that's why we have a column of content stacking on top of each other. If I save this, then nothing's actually gonna change because this is the default value. But what I can do is change this to row now instead of column. And what that says is, look, I want these to be in a row, not in a column. So they should sit side by side instead of on top of each other. So if I save this now, hopefully we'll see these sitting next to each other. And they do, one, two, three, four. And by default, they stretch to take up all the available space. Now, remember before I gave this a flex of one. If I take that away and save it now, then it's only gonna take up the amount of space that this container takes up right here, okay? So, Adding flex one means that this takes up all the available space and then automatically these will take up the full height of that. Okay, I hope that makes sense. So we have these two properties now, row and column that we can supply to flex direction. And that's gonna basically decide in what direction flex box is gonna work. Is it gonna work in a row or a column? And remember the default behavior is a column. So you can think of these as two axes a main axis and a cross axis. Now the main axis is whatever we supply to flex direction. So in our case, it's row, but by default it's column. And if we changed this to column, the main axis would then be column going down and the cross axis would be a row. But because we've specified right here, the flex direction is row, then the main axis is row and the cross axis is the opposite axis, the column, okay? Now, we can add a second property down here, and that property is gonna be justify content. And justify content kind of determines how these different elements should be spread out in the main axis. So in our case, along the row. At the minute, they're bunched up to each other over on the left. But what I could do is add a value in here, one of these values, in fact. For example, if I go to center, and save that, then it's gonna move all of these into the center. So that's a nice way we can center these things. Now, if I change this from center into something else, I'm gonna say flex end and save, then they all go to the end of the row. 
This by default was flex start. So if I save this now, they're all gonna go back to the left to the start of the row. Now I can do other things. I can do space between, and you can probably guess what that does. It adds space in between each one of these elements. And also I could do space around, which is similar, but it also adds space on the very left one and the very right one at the sides. So if I save this now, then we should see that in action. And there we go. So just using these two different properties, we can already create a nice layout with these different boxes. So justify content determines how we display the different components on the main axis. But remember, we also have a cross axis as well. So what I could do now is come down here and say align items. And this second property determines how we spread things out in the cross axis. So I could say center here. If I save this now, check it out over here, nothing actually changes, okay? And that's because the row has elements which are all the same height. But what I'm gonna do now is change the padding of each one of these. So 20, 30, and 40. So if I save this now, then we should see that all the elements are different sizes, but they're all in the center. So this one is in the middle of this, is in the middle of this, is in the middle of this. They're centrally aligned in the cross axis. Now, if I change this to the default one, which is flex hyphen start, then they're all gonna go to the top of the row, which is the flex start. You can see they're all aligned to the top of the row. I can do flex end over here as well like so, and they should all now go to the end at the bottom. So hopefully you can see how these different properties give us a lot of different control over how to display our different components in rows and columns. Now, like we could have a flex property on the container, we can also have the flex property on each one of these different boxes as well. And the flex property is gonna determine how much space this item takes up. So for example, let me give this a flex of one and let me give the next one a flex of one as well. Let me just paste that in and the next one and the next one as well. Now what this means is that each one of these boxes is gonna take up an equal share of the whole space. They're all gonna be flexible. They're all gonna flex up to take up all the available room to them because currently there are spaces between these and they're all gonna grow at the same rate because they all have the flex of one and they're all gonna grow to that rate. Imagine we had a piece of pie or cake and we're splitting it up into four pieces and each one has a share of one. That's exactly what is happening to the space available. They're all gonna be able to flex to the same amount of space. So if we save this, we should see this in action over here. And we can see now they all take up the same amount of space in the row horizontally. Now, if I change one of them to flex two, that means that this one is gonna take up twice as much room as the rest of them. So now if we had, say, a pie, then this is getting two slices, this one, this one, and this one. Does that make sense? It's the same in a flex row. We're now splitting this up into five sections because we have two, three, four, five. This is getting two of them, the rest of them are getting one. So if I save that now, then box one should be twice as long as the rest of them. And we can see that. And I can go to an extreme and change this to five, save that. And now this is five times as big. Now I can make these all different from one another. So I could say the first one has a flex of one, then a flex of two for the second one, then a flex of one, then a flex of three, for example, save that and they should all have different sizes, except these two, box one and three, which should be the same as each other, okay? So all of this stuff gives us a lot of flexibility, no pun intended, when it comes to laying out our content. Now, a lot of this, if you've never used Flexbox before, might seem overly complex, but really it's not. Just have a play around with this a little bit and it will all click into place. But anyway, now we know a little bit about Flexbox, what I'm gonna do is go back to app.js and I'm going to comment out where we have sandbox. We don't want that anymore. And uncomment all of this stuff here so we can see the original project again. 
And what I'm going to do now is address the issue of this thing down here where these get pushed off the page. Let me just add in a load of random to do so we can see this in action. So that should be enough. Now, if I try to scroll to the bottom, I can't. And that's because the flat list is being pushed right down off the screen down here by these things at the top. Now, Flexbox can help us sort this out. So first of all, notice we have these three views. We have a view up here, container. Inside that we have content. Inside that we have list. So what I'm gonna do is first of all, apply a flex of one to container. In fact, it already has that flex of one, right? So we know that this container right here is taking up the whole space of the screen. It's stretching to fill it. Now, the content right here, which is this stuff, this doesn't have a flex of one. What I'm gonna do is give this a background color of red, just so we can see where this is on the screen. Okay, so we can see at the minute, the content goes up to here, right? It starts here and goes down to here. Now, if I add a new to-do, then the content is gonna stretch to wherever the content goes up to, okay? And if I add enough, then it's eventually gonna go off the screen. And it's going to go off the screen because this bit up here is pushing it down off the screen. Make sense? Now, if I apply a flex of one to this, then it's only ever going to take up the available space. So it will go down to here, but not beyond it. So if I save it now, then by default, it should automatically go to the bottom of the screen here. Okay. Now then, what I'm going to do is give this a slightly better color because red looks horrible to look at and then save it. I'm also going to do the same thing for the list. Now, if I give this a background color of say yellow, then we should see where this goes up to this list. And remember the list is the thing that surrounds the flat list right here. Okay. So this is the flat list. Now it doesn't have a flex of one, so it's not automatically going down to take up all the room. And again, if I add loads of different to-dos, then eventually it's going to go off the screen. Now, if I move this down, we can see it goes off the screen. We can scroll a little bit, but not all the way to the bottom. We can still see another one is being pushed off the screen at the bottom. And again, that's because it's going off the screen. But if we apply a flex of one to this, it means, okay, well, Take this list container, this view, and just make it expand to take up what's available in the screen, what's left for me to use. Don't go off the screen. So if I save this now, hopefully everything should work. So let me start adding new to-dos. And uh, hopefully that should be enough. So now we can see it doesn't go off the screen, even though I've added loads of them. It doesn't go off the screen and now we can scroll all the way to the bottom and they're all contained on the screen. So hopefully now you can see the benefit of using Flexbox and it is one of those things that you probably do need to learn if you're serious about React Native. Now I'm just going to get rid of these background colors because I really don't think they do anything for the app and then save it. And then we should be back to how it looked originally. However, now we have these flex items or rather these flex properties controlling how it's being displayed on the screen and it won't ever be pushed off the screen at the bottom.